Stepping up to the couch, it's Brian, who led the league last season in cracked screens. But with his new athletic case, it looks like that won't be the case. <laughs> Touchdown, Brian! Before we start this video, I have to do this, and I will be having to do this for a while. Please go check out The Goatmentary. The Goatmentary is a four-part documentary on the greatest of all time debate that I spent over a year making. It's really good, and I would really appreciate it if you would check it out. So with that out of the way, I want to talk about Michael Jordan and the myth that he was just a scorer. And unfortunately, when the name Michael Jordan comes up, the name LeBron James does not fall that far behind. And as a result of that, this video is basically going to become a comparison video of the two to prove my point. But please don't turn the comment section into a LeBron versus Jordan debate. But I consistently hear this narrative that the reason that LeBron James is a superior player to MJ is because he is more versatile. He averages a lot more rebounds and a lot more assists, but Michael Jordan... He just averaged a few more points per game. Well, I would like to talk about why this narrative is bullshit, and I'll actually show you how MJ was arguably just as versatile of a player as LeBron James. So first of all, I think that most people are aware that MJ was a damn good defender. I'd say 99% of people following basketball are aware of that. I don't really think that people who say MJ was just a scorer mean that for his game as a whole, just his offensive game. But for that 1% that wasn't aware, first of all, Come on, man. And second of all, MJ was a nine-time all-defensive first-team player. He is one of five guards in NBA history to win Defensive Player of the Year. From 1985 to 1992, MJ averaged one block and 2.7 steals as a guard. And in 1988, when he won Defensive Player of the Year, he averaged 3.2 steals and 1.6 blocks. More steals and blocks than LeBron ever averaged. LeBron has only cracked one block a game three times. MJ MJ averaged one block over an entire decade while being two to three inches shorter. So with defense out of the way, next we need to talk about rebounding, which I get C presented without context way too often. Michael Jordan has a career average of 6.2 rebounds a game, and LeBron, for his career, averages 7.4. That's a 1.2 rebound per game difference for LeBron, so to a lot of people, that automatically means that LeBron is a better rebounder than MJ. Which, I get. I mean... He averages more, right? Well, this really, really, really needs to be put into proper context when we're debating this aspect of their games. Michael Jordan was 6'6 six six and 195 pounds. LeBron is 6'8 six to 6'9, six and no one seems to agree which it is, and 250 pounds. LeBron was a significantly larger player. MJ was the size of a guard. LeBron is the size of a power forward playing small forward. He played power forward for three seasons of his career, so we have a essentially a power forward averaging more rebounds than a guard. And my only take for that would be... No shit. LeBron has a significant advantage in size as well as era. In the 80s and 90s, the league was so much more big man oriented. Teams started legit power forwards alongside their centers. For the last, I don't know, six years, the NBA has gone in the direction of stretch fours, which I think the game is better for, but it also means that players who traditionally don't grab as many rebounds are grabbing a lot more. I think the NBA's power forward transition happened over LeBron. Miami years because of Chris Bosh, so we will leave them out. But before that transition, LeBron averaged 7 rebounds a game. In his second stint in Cleveland till today, he averaged nearly a whole rebound more. And in the last 3 years, where stretch 4s have basically become the norm, he has averaged 8.6 boards a game. So, basically, the transition to stretch fours has given LeBron a .4 rebound a game advantage on Michael Jordan. Had they both played under the same circumstances, LeBron would have only averaged .8 more rebounds for his career, despite being 2-3 to three inches taller and 55 pounds heavier. Now 
Next, we have assists. Now, with rebounding, I think most people are aware of the context surrounding that in regards to position, size, and era, but I don't think many are aware of the context surrounding Michael Jordan's playmaking ability. Michael Jordan is often portrayed as a ball hog, someone who, on the offensive end, his only contribution was scoring the ball. So some would say that LeBron, as a whole, is a better offensive player than Michael because he can contribute both to the scoring and to the playmaking. Now, before we get into this, I would just like to say that yes, LeBron James is a superior passer to Michael Michael Jordan. I would never try to argue against that. Numbers are definitely not the best way to gauge a player's playmaking ability. For example, for the last three years, Russell Westbrook has averaged 1.9 more assists than Chris Paul, but Russ is in no way a better passer than CP3. Actual passing talent versus actual assists per game can vary. So my argument will not be that Jordan is a better passer than LeBron, nor would it ever be, but that the gap between the two is not nearly as significant as it is portrayed. So with that out of the way, I want to talk about Doug Collins. Doug Collins was the Bulls coach from Jordan's second season to his fifth. When he was the head coach, Michael Jordan averaged 6.2 assists per game over those three years. He averaged seven combined in his fourth and fifth season under Collins and eight per game in 89, the last year with Doug Collins. Then the Chicago Bulls hired Phil Jackson, who implemented the triangle offense. In 1989, MJ averaged eight assists under Collins. With Jackson, he averaged six points a 1.7 drop-off. He then averaged 5 assists per game over Jackson's tenure with the Bulls, which was until MJ retired for the second time. So, MJ was getting a hell of a lot of assists until he was put into Jackson's offense, which limited his ability to get those assists by having him play more of an off-ball role, getting the ball in the post, and catch-and-shoot mid-range shots. MJ was handling the ball and creating shots off of the dribble for himself and others way less. And Jackson was actually right to make this decision. The Bulls were on average 12th in offense under Collins when MJ was more on ball, getting more assists. With Jackson, the Bulls were on average 2.8th in offense. So MJ averaging less assists was actually good for the Bulls offense. But let's say this change never happened and MJ averaged 7 assists per game up until his retirement with the Bulls. He would have put up 4,095 assists over 7 years as opposed to the 2,960 that he got under Phil, over 1,100 more assists. For his career, he would have put up 6,762 assists in his career, which is 700 less assists than LeBron did in the same amount of games played. Like I said, LeBron was the better passer, and even the numbers would indicate that. But an average of one more assist per game and 700 career total assists is not that big of a gap. And if your rebuttal is that, well, the Bulls were worse with MJ as a playmate, so maybe he wasn't actually that good of a passer. That's a fair argument, but my reply would be, how do you know that's not the case with LeBron? LeBron has always been the lead handler. Maybe LeBron in an off-ball role would have resulted in more winning basketball. Maybe it results in six championships instead of three. Coaches who run different offenses have always changed assists and point and everything averages. Look at James Harden. In 2016, Harden averaged 7.5 assists a game under coach J.B. Bickerstaff. The next season when Mike D'Antoni was hired, suddenly he averaged a league high 11.2 assists. That's a difference of 3.7 assists per game. D'Antoni is known for running offense with big time ball handlers. He was the head coach of the Steve Nash Phoenix Suns. That's an extreme example. Let's look back at Phil Jackson. The two seasons where Kobe Bryant averaged six assists per game were two of the nine seasons that he wasn't coached by Jackson. Three of those seasons were the first three years of his career and four of them were the last four years of his career. So the two seasons where he was still in his prime, 2006 and 2013, he averaged six a game when he wasn't in the triangle offense and was creating more off of the dribble. He averaged 5.1 under Jackson. It wasn't as significant of a difference because Kobe wasn't as good of a passer as MJ, but the point remains. So given the context of size, era, and position, the difference in rebounds per game between MJ and LeBron is minimal, and it's even arguable that with that context, MJ was actually a better rebounder than LeBron. And the reason that MJ didn't average a crazy amount of assists was because of a coaching and offensive change that happened at the prime of his career, not a 
lack of playmaking ability. So again, this wasn't supposed to be a MJ versus LeBron video, but it basically did become that. But I just wanted to apply some context to Michael Jordan's skill as a basketball player and end the myth that MJ was just a scorer. That's the end of the video. Please be sure to check out the Goatman Terry and like and subscribe for more NBA content like this. And cue